What is going on football fans back at it with another New York Giants video before I get started on the video just want to let everybody know I will be live tonight at about 9 30 10 o'clock for the weekly show talking Giants have bad dog on the channel as usual as we recap some of the things that happened over the last two days talk about the preseason game coming up and any questions that you guys may have as things are starting to ramp up just a little bit for the New York Giants of course yesterday by all accounts the New York Giants had an underwhelming practice, specifically on the defensive side of the football. Well, that was not the case today. We'll talk about that in this video. We're all gonna, also going to talk about the return of Saquon Barkley, which I think was the major storyline, an update on the Adore Jackson situation, and the New York Giants made a trade. There's been rumors that the New York Giants were looking to ship away Ryan Santoso now for the last couple of days, and that, in fact, did happen as the New York Giants sent Santozo to Graham Gano, uh, Graham Gano's previous team, the Carolina Panthers, for a conditional seventh-round pick. We're going to pull up some of the quotes, and then I'll give my full opinion on everything. First thing we're going to talk about is the Adore Jackson situation. This is coming out from Jordan Renan this morning. Got an update late yesterday after, after I made my video from Pat Leonard, but this gave a little bit more clarity on the situation. Starting quarterback Adore Jackson has a minor ankle sprain per source eyes on week one so it was not a high ankle sprain it's a minor minor ankle sprain Giants kept him out of practice today as they should have you don't want to risk further damaging that but it does not sound like it's going to be anything serious and it sounds like more than likely Adore Jackson will be suiting up week one for the New York Giants and I for one am thrilled with that news of course you know after the injury you started to think well what are they going to do on the exterior corner position and for a game or two you could get by but it really made you realize that we're pretty thin at that outside cornerback position yes some fans may be in love with julian love but the guys only played it i think one full game on the outside against the dallas cowboys late in the season last year going up against the backup quarterback and outside of that you got a sixth round rookie so i think it really makes you realize how imperative it is that both james bradbury and adore jackson remain as healthy as possible throughout this entire season so great news there on the adore jackson front the next thing we're going to talk about is the news that came out about ryan santoso this is coming out from my sports update, one of the, you know, the, the best uh, people to follow on Twitter when it comes to rumors and, and breaking news in the NFL. Trade. The Giants are trading kicker Ryan Santozo to the Panthers for a conditional seventh round pick. Carolina has been looking for help at the position as Joey Sly has had some struggles. And from what to my understanding, the way this is going to work, the conditional seventh round pick, he will have to play in two games. Um, in order for the New York Giants to receive that seventh round pick, I'm assuming it's in next year's draft. Uh, I, I don't know how any Giants fan could be upset about this at all. New York Giants got what I think they could have. Some fans have said that they should have tried to package him for an offensive lineman. Look, at the end of the day, teams are not looking to trade a valuable offensive lineman for a kicker that was on the practice squad last year for the New York Giants when every team in the league had the opportunity to sign him. Santozo looked good. I'll be the first to say it. I was at FanFest. He was not coming down from 55 yards. Also has the, uh, the ability to be a punter in a pinch, and hopefully he gets two starts with the Carolina Panthers, and I wish him nothing but the best. But for a guy that was not going to make the team, you weren't going to carry two kickers to get anything. For Ryan Santozo is a slam dunk home run. So I think Dave Gettleman did a great job here with this trade to be able to get anything for a kicker. Uh, you know, look at Graham Gano last year. We picked him up off waivers. Ended up being a near Pro Bowl kicker in the NFL. You could find kickers. So I think it's a big home run here for the New York Giants. And yes, it's only a seventh round pick. But now this, um, I guess, negates everybody that may have been complaining about the Keon Crossan trade. The New York Giants gave up a 2023 sixth round pick. So not even 2022 to bring in Crossan, who's supposed to help on special teams this draft pick if they get it which you assume they will will more than likely offset that so a good job there by Dave Gettleman to pick up this extra seventh round pick in trading Ryan Santozo and I think this is one trade that New York Giants fans can't really complain about um now the big thing we're going to talk about in this video and, and the big storyline regarding the practice today was Saquon Barkley Saquon Barkley back on the field for the New York Giants, who is wearing the, wearing the red jersey, which, of course, traditionally is what the quarterback wears. You don't want a lot of contact. He's coming off the injury, and that's great. I mean, that's great. You don't want him to get hit. They're trying to ease him back, but Barkley started to ramp it up a little bit as the start of the regular season. I think it's just 16 or 17 days away, so great news there. This is coming out from Art Stapleton. Saquon Barkley just caught two passes from Daniel Jones in the live 11-on-11 11 11 drills, including an angle route that he turned into more of a slant. 
Sweet catch on the run, and 26 could have gone the distance. Period ends with a 48-yard field goal from Graham, Graham Gano, which was intentional. And if you go on Twitter, you can see some of the highlights throughout practice. Daniel Jones made a couple of really nice throws. He hit um, Dante Pettis on a deep play, uh, pass down the left sideline. Really good placement on the ball. So great stuff coming out from Daniel Jones. We'll get into the final stat line. And Barkley looks like he's close to 100% the way that he's cutting on that leg. We'll... Um, also pull up some of the quotes of what Barkley had to say about after practice about his performance. This coming out from Zach Rosenblatt. Finally, some momentum. Daniel Jones completes a nice deep pass to Dante Pettis, his first deep completion in New England. And this is kind of reminiscent about, you know, kind of when we went up against Cleveland the first practice. The New York Giants traveled there. They struggled. And again, like I've said in all my videos regarding these practices, I'm not going to get too high. And I'm not going to get too low, so I'm not going to get super excited about this. Just like I didn't get super depressed over the performance yesterday. Practice is what it is. It's meant for you to improve on the things that need to be improved, which means you should struggle in some way, shape, or form. If you're a good coach, you should be putting your players in situations that they necessarily may not have been great at last year. You know, I was listening to Art Stapleton's podcast and uh, this morning, which I, I think it's great. Definitely uh, would consider giving it a listen if I were you guys. And he talked about how the New York Giants have really fought focused on the red zone because they struggled in it so much last year so maybe the stats aren't going to be gaudy but the Giants are trying to work on things that they think need to be improved going into the season so regardless of what the numbers are in practice good or bad I'm not going to go crazy Joe Judge is there to do one thing improve this football team and when you're improving your football team you're supposed to work on the things that you're not great at to try to get better at them so that's kind of the way I look at this but it was nice to see the pass by Daniel Jones it was a drop in the bucket and it just kind of reminds you of how accurate he is with that deep ball when he in fact does have time to throw now the offensive line today by all accounts not the best I think the first drive they really struggled but let's jump further into it Jordan Renan better day for the Giants one horrible series for the offense hold hold full start but bounce back moments later with a touchdown drive downfield catch by Dante Pettis and a touchdown reception by running back Eli Penny overall Daniel Jones had a solid day. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, Parrot definitely had a really bad day. It was the first series, though, and then the offense started to click a little bit. But obviously, we don't want to hear that. The offensive line, a major question mark for the New York Giants going into the year. This then coming out from Art Stapleton talking about the defense. And I'm going to pull up the final stat lines in a bit, but the defense did a much better job today. Yesterday, Mac Jones was 35 of 40. Cam Newton got some time today as well, but the New York Giants defense was definitely much improved today. Stapleton, Giants defense finally stands up. Big uh, pass breakup by Xavier McKinney, followed by a Logan Ryan pick of Mac Jones in the 11-on-11. 11 11. Another player that uh, played relatively well today from what I read, Sam Beal, actually had a pass breakup as well in some of the drills. This coming out from uh, Paul Dettino. Giants Barkley near the end of the session took two more reps in the two minute drill and caught, a sh and caught a short pass in the flat and a short one over the middle. He moved very well. So I already talked about the play, but I just wanted to give you guys different perspectives from some of the beat writers in regards to how Saquon Barkley looked on the field today. Tatino said that he looked like he was running very well. Rosenblatt. Rough one today for the offensive line, especially paired. Daniel Jones getting routinely pressured or sacked and some holding penalties too. So something they definitely got to clean up. And hopefully they're able to do that in their third preseason game. This coming out from Pat Leonard after the practice. He talked to members of the defense who, like I said, struggled mightily yesterday. Logan Ryan and Blake Martinez were disappointed with the Giants' defensive performances Wednesday and made a point to correct it today. Ryan said it was the worst day of football in a while. Said when Martinez and Ryan have a bad day on the same day, we lose by 100. As leaders, we had to be better. So, New York Giants corrected some things, kind of like the Cleveland Browns practice. The first practice, they looked really bad. He said that they regrouped, and they did a much better job today. And these were the final stat lines for Daniel Jones, for Mike Glennon, for Mac Jones, and Cam Newton at the quarterback position. It's unofficial. Rosenblatt wrote it down, and I would assume it's fairly accurate. He had Daniel Jones 23 of 29 throwing the football. Mac Jones was 9 of 20. He had at least one interception, may have had two. Newton was four of six, so a combined 13 of 26 for 50% completion. And Mike Lennon was one for three. And like I said, I don't read too much into the stats during uh, practices. But regardless, it's good to see an improvement on the defensive side today. This coming out from Jordan Renan. Saquon Barkley said he felt good after his first taste of live drills post-injury. Had eight live reps, three catches, looked natural. Hates the no-contact red jersey, but naturally 
wasn't thinking about making contact. Really didn't think about it at all, he said. Excellent sign. So basically, Barkley saying there, and I think it was on one of his catches. I read somebody else. Um, I don't know if I pulled up the tweet for it. No, I did not. But I read somebody else talk about it as well. It was on one of his catches where he said that he didn't even think about the potential contact that was coming his way, which I think is the biggest obstacle that Barkley may have to overcome during this, I guess, this process of him getting back on the football field. The mental aspect may even be the more challenging part than the physical aspect. The physical aspect is over and done with. We've seen Barkley train like an animal. He looks like he's damn near 100% physically. Now you got to worry a little bit about the mental part, which is why they're easing him back on the football field, trusting his body to make cuts. So that's a great sign by Barkley when he came out and said he didn't even think about it, uh, the potential contact on that pass. Of course, he's in a red jersey. He knows he's not going to get rocked. And I'm sure the New York Giants will ease him in. And I'm sure that's why Joe Judge has come out and said that it wouldn't be fair to Saquon Barkley if they didn't put him through some contact before the start of the regular season. We'll have to wait and see if the Giants put Barkley out there for a series in this preseason matchup against the New England Patriots or if they, you know, continue to play it safe and steady, kind of the way that Joe Judge has treated all his players during this training camp process. But the Santoso trade, a grand slam. A Dory Jackson back in the lineup sooner than later and I expect him to be out there for week one and Barkley is good to go defense much improved today like I said I'll be live tonight hopefully I get to see some of you guys on the channel as always if you like what you watch please subscribe drop a comment maybe give me a little thumbs up cheers